What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Pickleball Connection podcast. I'm Barrett. And I'm Danae. And today we have another episode for you of the Pickleball Connection. We're super excited to hang out as we've had a couple weeks off. But we're going to try out a little bit of a new style with our episode today. Let us know in the comments how you like this episode. Um, Previously, if you've been following along with our podcast, we kind of go over some of the latest pickleball news, pickleball gossip, even kind of like the hot controversy topics from your local pickleball rec play nights, and we kind of discuss those. But on this episode, we're going to do something a little different. And what we're going to do is... We're going to go back and forth between Danae and I, and we're each going to share kind of our top three tips for players 4-0 and below. So if you're looking to get to the 4-0 level or above, then this podcast is for you. And even if you're above the 4-0 level, there's probably still some things that you could uh, pick out. And if, uh, or maybe you could let us know in the comments Um, if you agree with these or kind of what helped your game get to the next level. So without further ado, we're going to kind of jump into it. And uh, Danae, if you want to start us off, what is your first kind of tip for players 4-0 and below? So these are in no particular order. um, But the first tip, I would say it's probably like the most known, but I feel like it's not carried out. Um, and, and it's to prioritize drilling. Now, I know when I first started playing pickleball, like the games were the funnest, like showing up to open play was the funnest part. But what you realize when you want to really start getting better and getting more skilled and getting higher level is that there really is a massive advantage that people have when they drill. If you think about a game, particularly doubles, Um, you're not hitting every single ball on the court, you know, your partner's hitting some, you're hitting some, and then, you know, you're not really getting as many touches as you actually think. What's incredible about drilling and prioritizing drilling is you get all the touches on the court, meaning you're hitting every ball, particularly if you're just drilling with one other person and you get to practice specific skills. And just like any other sport, Pickleball really is also a game of muscle memory and getting reps in is a really valuable way to master your shots, especially your finesse shots and, and honestly, even your power shots, all of those things, you know, have certain timings and certain nuances that drilling will give you reps on reps on reps of learning that muscle memory and getting really confident and then being able to use them in a game. So, um, my, one of my tips is to prioritize drilling. Yeah, I love it. I I actually heard, you know, some people mention when it comes to drilling, I've seen this a lot in the forums and stuff that people actually do want to drill, but a lot of times people have trouble finding like a drilling partner. Like, obviously, I know we have each other that we can go hit with, but how would you find like a drilling partner if you didn't have like a a significant other or someone that liked pickleball? Honestly, I would start with your open play people. I would see who, who they're like, ask around if anyone wants to drill. I've done that before. At open play. Um, another great option to do is if your area has a Facebook group, which I feel like most pickleball courts in most areas have like pickleballers of whatever group on Facebook, I would just post on the forum there and just be like, Hey, I'm looking for anyone to, um, to drill. Is anyone interested? And then kind of coordinating schedules from there. Um, I feel like there's a lot of ways to, to find that out, but those are maybe the two ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. I love it. And, uh, if you guys are like, you found your drilling partner, you're like, oh, I want to go work on some shots. You decided you want to drill, but you don't really know what drills to use. 
Be sure to check out the playpickleball.com YouTube channel. Uh, Danae and I actually uh, have the privilege of kind of helping manage and run this and create content for playpickleball.com. There's tons of beginner content and videos all the way up to beginner to intermediate to advanced. And there's a handful of videos that we kind of break down our favorite drills. So check that out. There's also some other great um, kind of resources on YouTube. That's kind of what we did when we kind of first started drilling uh, as kind of just looked up drills online on YouTube and kind of then and then eventually you kind of start creating your own and figuring out what works. Okay, I'm going to go on to my uh, first tip for people wanting to get to the 4.0 plus level, and that is don't chase the trash. Speaking of this, Danae and I actually saw this in a video early on when we first started playing pickleball. Uh, this video, this guy was talking about don't chase the trash, and I didn't really know what that meant. Um, but basically what the guy was talking about is when you're at the baseline and uh, you know your goal is to advance to the kitchen, so you serve the ball, the other team returns to you, if they know what they're doing, the returning team's running to the kitchen line, you're back at the baseline, and if you want to get to the best level, it's solving the riddle of how do I get uh, with my third shot, whether I'm hitting a drop, or whether I'm hitting a drive, or even if I'm going to get crazy and mix in a third shot lob, you know, what do, how do I get from the baseline to the kitchen? And a lot of times at the, at, at the level 4-0 and below, uh, I see people often... Uh, running forward to the kitchen kind of out of control. And I know I personally did this. I was like, get to the kitchen, get to the kitchen, get to the kitchen. And I would find myself kind of out of control, running forward and advancing forward, even if I hit a poor or a bad kind of high third shot that could get hit hard back at me. So don't chase the trash, meaning judge your third shot. If you're, if you're hitting a ball that they have to hit up on, that's uh, – you know, more, more, uh, unattackable, please get forward. Don't stay back. Um, but if you're hitting a ball that stays up and they can kind of, keep, uh, keep you back with pressure, don't feel the need to rush in. Just wait, be patient, hit another one. And once you've hit a good ball, then go in, don't run through every shot to get to the kitchen. So kind of don't move forward too fast and don't move forward too slow. I think that's figuring out how to get to the kitchen consistently. That is my first tip. Love it. Hey guys, real quick, we do want to briefly mention Selkirk backpacks. We really love the backpacks that Selkirk has put out. They're really functional, really versatile. They look really sharp. We use them when we play and we use them when we travel. Actually, last time we were in the airport, we packed our Selkirk backpacks for basically our luggage. And the person behind us was like, whoa, like those are such cool backpacks. Like it's awesome. They're, they're like, where'd you get them? Yeah, it, it's just, they're super functional. They have a bunch of different sizes. I take stuff for work and mine and bring it to a coffee shop. I mean, they're just, they're awesome. Yeah, guys, so if you're in the market for a backpack, um, there's all different sizes, all different colors. Head on over to sellkirk.com and get yours today. I think my next tip yeah. would be to, I guess it kind of builds off of yours, honestly. Yeah. And it's to master the transition zone. So for those of you who don't really know what I'm talking about, um, you have the baseline of the court. That's where you serve and return the ball. And then you have the kitchen line, which is the non volley zone line that you see a lot of people dinking at. Okay. Um, the transition zone is the area between those two spots. And I always tell people the best real estate to play at on the entire court is the kitchen line. Okay. That's the the place where points are won and lost. That's where you can set up points. That's the place where you can be the most offensive. That's why I say it's the most valuable real estate on the entire pickleball court. You want to be able to play there. Now, when you are particularly the serving team, you are a little bit at a disadvantage because you have to basically get your team to work up to the kitchen. And if you are in that 4-0 below level or even slightly above, you'll know that that area in the mid court can be really tricky to work through. And that's that transition area. And so I would say if you are somebody who you're like, man, I really want to get high level play, like I really want to advance in skill, particularly practice hitting shots in the transition transition zone. Uh, I see a lot of people, like you said, just rush through it or yeah. go too fast or go too slow and um, learning your shots like resetting learning your shots, like when to go up and when to not, when to split step and stop moving your momentum and play defensive versus offensive. All of those shots in that transition zone area, that to me is what separates a 
good players to great players. Yeah. So if you can always get your team to the kitchen line, you will win a lot of games. Yeah. You will win a ton of games if you're the serving team and you can get through the transition zone. So particularly practice your resets, practice your drops, practice your drives, practice when to move up, when to stay back, when to stop your momentum, when to play defense, when to play offense, all of those things in the transition area, you will win a lot of games. So practice that spot. Perfect. I love it. Again, shameless plug, the playpickleball.com YouTube channel. We've put out videos on the transition zone. And um, it's interesting because uh, those videos don't often get the most views because it's not a sexy topic, you know, but um, they're very important. And so uh, go watch some of those on how to advance forward or uh, how to hit a reset. Those types of videos will help you get to the next level. I couldn't agree more. My second tip is emphasize footwork. So I know for me, one of the biggest mistakes I made early on is that I got flat footed in between shots. So a lot of players 4-0 and below, they only move their feet when the ball's on their side of the court. And they kind of, you, you kind of watch them play and you, you see that it kind of feels like they're out of control because they're kind of running quickly toward the ball, reacting and kind of waiting to the ball gets to their side of the court. But if you watch advanced players, it's almost like they're just under control. And that's because when the ball's not on their side of the court, their feet are moving. They're, they're, they're um, not necessarily like jumping up and down. You don't have to be, you know, obviously there's pro players, James Ignatowicz to be one that, that really are hyperactive with their feet. And you don't necessarily have to do that if that's not your style. But um, if you're if you're flat footed, if you let the weight, uh, um, if you let your weight get into your heels, then your reaction time is going to be slower and you're going to kind of be, um, you know, running around all frantic on the court. And the best players, if you watch them play, they just look super in control. And that comes from footwork. So make that a focus for you. You know, a lot of times we want to focus on all the shots and everything. But if you're constantly just moving your feet and getting in the right position, you're going to win way more points and you're going to advance in level. So I'd say focus on footwork. Don't get flat footed. This also really applies to if someone speeds the ball up at you um, and you're on your back foot, that's how pop-ups happen a lot. So really stay in, the, in an athletic position. Love that. You want to give us your next one? Yes. So my last tip that I would really, I guess it's more of a strategy, but um, it's to play to your strengths. So I'll tell you guys a story. I used to play basketball growing up um, and my basketball coach told us all this story. And he said, you know, there was this girl who was an incredible basketball player. Like she was scouted out like as a freshman in high school because she was like one of the best three pointers in three point shooters in the game. And um, when she was like a sophomore or junior, like her coach really wanted her to work on some of like her driving, meaning getting to the basket and shooting like closer shots. And what ended up happening was she went from being like an incredible player to like a good player because she kind of stopped honing in on her strength of like just going for three point shots and really started working on, you know, driving more, going to the basket more. And it was really interesting to hear that story and be like, wow, like, should you work on your weaknesses? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like you should be a well-rounded pickleball player. Um, but that being said, you really should hone in on your strengths and you really should strategically use your strengths in a game, in game settings and in tournaments. And obviously don't neglect the basics, obviously like learn your dinks, learn all that stuff, learn the finesse, learn the shots. But like, for example, if you are a Kwong Dong, who's a pro pickleball player, and he has like a really killer drive, like it's super fast and crazy top spin. Like I actually love how he plays doubles because he he literally will drive the ball and like play ha play fast, play heavy, play top spin, and he just does it in doubles. And he's had some really big wins because of that. And he's like using his yeah. strengths because he knows it. And then you have somebody different who. You know, I'll say like Tina Pisnik, she's a very finesse player. Um, she's also a pro player, very finesse, very slicey, comes from tennis, and she plays to her strengths. She does yeah. a lot of slice 
and she has some of the best defense in the game. And what I love about, you know, players like that is they know what their strength is and they intentionally strategize and play their game to use their strength a lot. And so just something to think about as you continue to play pickleball and continue to notice like, oh, wow, like I'm really good at driving. Or maybe you're like, dude, I'm really good at dinking. I could out dink anyone. Literally strategize your gameplay to go around your strengths instead of just playing like, I don't want to say like, don't play well-rounded, but instead of playing how maybe you think you should play, Um, you know, so just think about that, especially when you start playing tournaments and you start, you know, setting the tone for the court. Um, For example, I really love to speed up the ball. And part of the reason why I love to speed up the ball is because I really love to counter. I like, I really love to get in a firefight. And so I'll intentionally speed up the ball so that I can get in a firefight with somebody across the court from me because I, I, I really like that and I'm good at that. And so just something to think about, obviously practice the basics, be a well-rounded player, but when it comes to competition, make sure you play to your strengths. I love that. I think that's actually speaking to me right now <laughs> because like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like in my game right now, I'm, I'm very focused on like trying to get better at certain areas that like, I feel like I, I struggle at. And I, you know, I think that there's such a balance here. Like you said, it's important to be well-rounded, but I have to realize, you know, you know, I think there's a lot, there's a lot that you can learn by watching other people's games. You brought up pro players, you watch their games. You're like, Oh, I want to try to implement that. And that can be good to an extent. But I think what I've been doing lately is kind of like, Ooh, this pro player does that. I'm going to try that and like, try to like fix holes in my game, which I think I should, but I have to remember that I have to play to my strengths and I have to really, you know, not just work on my weaknesses. I mean, yes, in a practice setting that can be, be good, but to your point, I know in like the, the, in a tournament, often what I find myself doing that I have to get better at is I find myself, you know, it's so easy to, when there's something on the line, like your game's on the line in the tournament, just not want to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And everything is like, turns into I can't make an error I can't make an error and it is true the teams that make the less air the least amount of errors usually end up winning however you can get into this very defensive mode where you're not dictating the point and you're not playing to your strengths and so I think it's huge to play confident and to play to your strengths and especially when there's something on the line you know but I'm I think this is actually a good reminder for me because I feel like I've been honestly really hyper focused on trying to fix this hole in my game that I know is there. Um, but as much as I should try to like fix it and work on things, I should also, when I get into a game, continue to play to my strengths. I think that's huge, great tip there. Uh, my last tip is pretty simple, um, but it's this: it's that less is more, and to simplify your swing. I think when we start really advancing when we start really trying to get to the next level, it's very easy to start doing too much. Your swing kind of gets a little bigger. You know, you're trying to get more tempo in your backswing and all of a sudden your backswing starts to get bigger and you're trying all these different things. Kind of like what we were just saying before, you're trying to fix these holes in your game. But when you come back to the simple basics of the game and you have a nice short and compact out front of your body swing, you really eliminate a lot of those errors. And I think within that kind of having, just focusing on having really soft hands on those finesse shots. Like when I'm hitting a finesse shot, I just, all I'm doing is just softening up my hands and simplifying the stroke. And then as the, I put more pace on the ball, I'm kind of like adding a little bit more to the stroke and like, I kind of like a little bit more firm with that shot. So kind of less focus on making your swing bigger and making it more tricky and adding spin by chopping at the ball. That's not necessary. It's actually like a little spin goes a long way. A little bit of this, you know, just minor adjustments to your game at a time will help you get better very quickly without making those errors and creating bad habits. So that's what I would say. But guys, would you let us know in the comments, do you agree with any of these? And for your game, what is the one tip that made your game go to the next level, whether that's from 3.0 to 3.5, from 3.5 to 4.0, or even if you're watching this as a more advanced player, 
what helped you get there? Let us know in the comments. The comment section could be a great resource for people if you guys will actually let us know. Um, in addition to that, please uh, let us know if you have any topics you want us to cover in future podcasts. If you're not currently following us uh, or subscribed, please do so. Leave us a review. It really helps to get this word out there. But guys, let us know if you liked this version of the podcast because we're going to continue to roll out ideas. And eventually, we're going to start having a really cool, entertaining guests on from the pickleball space. But guys, thanks for hanging out with us today, and we'll see you on the next one.